I knew I wanted to go from physics. Uh, it was building up then with uh, particle physics and uh, high energy stuff. I wanted to stay with classic. I liked the bio biological side, so I decided to go see what I could do in biophysics. Got a position at the Medical College of Virginia, then in Richmond, Virginia. Met a, the chair of physiology, who was an outstanding guy who had, with his student who became his wife, made the first clear length tension measurements for a single muscle fiber that was not reproduced, that was sometime in the 40s, I guess, and that difficult experiment was not reproduced until a friend of mine went to work with Sir Alan Hodgkin before he was Sir, um, and rediscovered the way to get single muscle fibers, which is very difficult. So he t had been to MBL. He knew I was interested in uh, electrical measurements of tissue, like skin at that time. Uh, he said, John, why don't you get uh, in touch with Kenneth Cole, who uh, goes to Woods Hole, is a sailor, he's got tattoos on him, <laughs> And um, and he is um, he's the most likely person uh, to be interested in your work. So it turned out that I, I thought that was a good idea, but I had no idea when I would even see this guy. And so I went to the physics. Society meeting. Um, I think it was in Washington, D.C. Uh, I gave the last talk of the last session on the last day. There, there was something like five people in the room. The previous speaker, the projectionist, the chairman, myself, and one person in the audience. So uh, the chairman was just an entirely different subject. He had no knowledge of so any, any questions. <laughs> Ask me a question. And I said, under the circumstances, would you please reveal your name? Kenneth Cole. I must have answered satisfactorily. I had, I had learned to use the phase plane plots the way he plotted his results. And we walked out together. <laughs> out of the five, two of us walked out together. He said, you know, I'm no longer uh, doing science. I'm scientific director at the Naval Medical Research Institute in Bethesda. And uh, I'm wondering if you could run my lab. Well, Well, if I had were to come and work with you in that lab, would you return to Woods Hole and start going back there each summer? Hmm. Okay. I accept! <laughs> Squid giant axons are available here in far, uh, only about two or three places in the world. Um, the condition of the ones here 
is that one can work on uh, cap ones that have been captured and brought in alive. In Plymouth, England, where Hodgkin and Huxley worked, they were the squid were decapitated and put on ice on the ship and then brought in. So that's, I think, one reason why our voltage clamp records showed much stronger currents. Uh, what we call a sucrose gap, uh, which was first designed by um, a guy named Stempfle uh, in, in Sarland, in which he had two streams of sucrose flowing past an axon uh, with the gap in between. He was making electrical measurements there. So we adapted that for as a much more critical way to, to um, measure the voltage and control the voltage in a way that was uh, far simpler than the way that Cole and his co-workers had designed, which was to um, pass an electric an electric wire or, or a, a glass candle, one or the other, uh, down, the, down the length of a, of a squid axon that maybe could be dissected out four, three or four inches. Uh, most tedious, most likely to, to, for the thing being advanced inside the axon, to hit the wall, most likely to have <clears throat> deplete, <laughs> wipe out, <laughs> a uh, ruin the axon, and with huge yeah. shouts of in indecent words, <laughs> which would be bleeped in the <laughs> text. Um, and, and that was, the, the yield of that was very low, perhaps l lucky one a day. With the new method, um, which we worked out on lobster, which is much smaller and shorter, but still we worked out the technique on that. Um, and we're able to do a, a reasonable voltage clamp. I heard a talk by a Japanese scientist about tetrodotoxin, the very powerful nerve poison, um, which he had a sample of and had used it on muscle and had concluded that it probably worked on the excitability part of the cell, which is a, is a sodium channel. And so he was interested in having experiments with the voltage clamp to, to make a definitive answer to the question, was it sodium? And I wanted to have something new to try out on, on the new voltage clamp technique. So I called Antosis and said, please hire this guy. So he came uh, from ha having been a postdoc at the University of Chicago, um, but had only a few months left on his visa. We worked furiously uh, the last six weeks of, uh, I guess it was 61, um, at Duke with, with the lobster. Uh, he took the, the records which were then made on uh, film 
got him and jumped on the plane to go back to Japan and had to stay there for two years. But in the meantime, I was able to get another Japanese um, who um, worked with me and actually I uh, was, was given another toxin by a Chinese friend. This toxin was from California salamanders. Um, and it worked almost identically the same as tetrodotoxin, one from the puffer fish. And it was very fortunate um, that we didn't, we were very careful and said, okay, this is Tarika toxin that's, that's from uh, the California salamander. It works like tetrodotoxin from the fugu fish in the Pacific. And interesting enough, some wonderful our chemists um, at Stanford uh, who knew the, the Chinese friend that and had worked with the Chinese friend had determined that the two toxins were identical. Finally, were able to persuade the, the Japanese that they'd gotten it, the structure wrong and they were identical. And then I by coming to Woods Hole to work on the squid axon, which was five times larger in diameter and two or three times large as long, uh, it made the, the electrical um, characteristics far more precise. We could measure the voltage and the current with much better precision. And so that became the, um, the thing that really, really brought home that tetrodotoxin was very clearly, completely uh, effective only on the one channel. Since then, um, there's been a, a lot of study on sodium channels, and there are some sodium channels, well known, that are not TTX sensitive, but this, this allows uh, people to um, apply tetrodotoxin to a preparation they're studying, and they can have a pretty good idea of when it blocks, yep, that's one of those channels, but if not, uh, it's one of the uh, in, insensitive, um, and that's that's widely used um, throughout neuroscience now. I had friends from Australia, bloody Australian, always had everything was bloody, uh, and he brought. Um, a number of toxins. One was from a um, blue-ringed octopus, which is on the shores of, of Australia. Uh, small, but very potent, and people have picked it up by mistake. Um, and that turned out to uh, have tetrodotoxin in the mix, but there, were, there was something in addition but very clear. Uh, and he brought spider web venom, uh, funnel web spider. Um, instead of knocking out the sodium, the action potentials were blocked they caused the 
activation of sodium to go the other direction. So it went and so you can kill by inactivity or overactivity. And that's actually uh, true for um, the, the red tide in New England uh, kills like tetrodotoxin. The red tide off of Florida kills by overactivity. Ah, how easy. The first summer, I caught the virus. This, this is the place for my soul and a lot of other people. I have a burial plot, Church Messiah, right off. Um, it's it's a virus that causes one to get itchy in the spring uh, to come back here. Uh, fortunately, there is no known cure. MBL is my, my scientific home. Um, I share, as many others, a loyalty to this place that is not shared with other institutions where I've been. Maybe my, I do have a deep loyalty to my undergraduate school. Um, but I, in the past, this place was so different because we were of the scientists, by the scientists, and for the scientists. So I have, I have had so much fun becoming deep friends with a number of my colleagues. Um, it's an in, it's extraordinary um, gift that I don't think you could get in any other situation.